Hello and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to see how to use STM32 Nucleo F44 6RE microcontroller board and what are the different features of this microcontroller board. This board will be used in our upcoming videos where we will learn how to design different projects and how to program STM32 microcontrollers. Basically, STM32 Nucleo boards can be categorized on the basis of their flash memory size and on the basis of the number of pins the microcontroller contains. On the basis of flash memory, when we talk about the flash memory, this is the memory where we, we will upload our code. So depending on your requirement, you can choose a memory size ranging from 16 kilobyte to somewhere around 2 megabytes. And based on the number of pins, we can see here, Nucleo boards provide you 32 pin, 64 pin and 144 pin microcontrollers. These microcontroller boards can further be classified in terms of mainstream microcontroller boards, low power microcontroller boards and high power microcontroller boards. If you see here F44 6RE falls under the category of high performance microprocessor, sorry microcontroller and it is based on Nucleo 64 that means 64 pin microcontroller and it can support up to 512 kilobyte of flash memory. So we can load maximum a 512 kilobyte program on this board. Let us see what are the prerequisites or hardware prerequisites required to cover this course. First of all, we will require a PC with Windows operating system. We will require Nucleo F44 6RE microcontroller boards. Then we will require a mini USB cable which can be connected to the PC and the microcontroller board. Then we may require some female to female header, DuPont wires or male to male, male to female depending on our requirements. Then we may use some push to on switch or we can say buttons and apart from that few LEDs. This will be required to understand the different functionalities and code the microcontroller in the upcoming videos. Now let us briefly talk about the structure of this microcontroller board and what it provides. First of all, here you can see the first pin is your or we can say the first connector is your flexible board power supply mini USB port which will be connected to your PC and this will be used to provide power as well as we can load programs through this USB port. Apart from that, you can just drag and drop your codes into this board because of the feature provided by the ST-Link V2.1. Then there are two push buttons. One is your user button and the second one is your reset button. So the blue button is your user button, button number one and button number two is the reset button. We have one STM32 microcontroller with 64 pins and it supports Arduino Uno extension connectors. Apart from that, we have Morpho extension header which are directly connected to the pins of the microcontroller unit. Apart from that, 
remember the user button 1 is connected to pc13 this will be helpful when we will be writing our codes so pc13 is connected to this button number 1 or you can say user button then we have reset button which is connected to the nrst pin or reset pin of the microcontroller and there is an on board led which is connected to pa5 port a is fifth pin remember there is only one user led and that is connected at pa5 and user button which is connected at pc13 apart from that this whole section on the top you can see this can be divided into two parts the lower part which contains the main microcontroller and the upper part which contains another microcontroller or we can say this is the debugger so upper part is your debugger or we can say it also supports programmer so the upper section is your programmer which will help you to upload your codes and remember all the morpho extension headers are directly connected to the microcontrollers pin so all these external connecting lines are connected to the microcontrollers different pins okay now after that we have discussed that we have an arduino extension connector so you have simply the same compatibility with the arduino connectors remember there is a jumper there are two jumpers provided in the microcontroller board on the top left D disconnecting this jumper allows you to debug the program and also program other microcontrollers or external microcontrollers which fall under the stm32 family then we have connector with sed features for stm32 connection so we have voltage vdd swd clock ground pin swd data pin reset pin swo application output all are there in our microcontroller remember the names so this is connector number 7 morpho connector 7 connector number 10 each pin can control or program multiple features for example one pin can be used as a digital pin or if programmed alternatively the same pin can be used for either spi connections i2c connections analog connections can bus connections and so on so remember you have to have these list of facilities which are available with the microcontroller board so connector number 5 connector number 6 these are for the arduino board connector number 9 connector number 8 these are compatible with the arduino uno board so connector number 5 6 8 and 9 are arduino compatible connectors now coming to the different layouts so you have to keep this diagram along with you you don't have to remember it because it is not possible to remember all the alternative functionalities available with the connectors so you have to keep these details along with you when you will be programming the microcontroller board you can download these images from the stm32 or stm's microcontrollers website 
and the link for the website are provided here i would recommend you to download the documents available in these two links this will be very helpful when you will be writing your programs next i tried my best to design the layout you can take the screenshot and keep a printout with you when you will be requiring these details you can just refer to this pinout so this is the pinout for connector number 7 then we have the pinout for connector number 10 so if you require these pinouts you may take a screenshot and keep it with you like i said each pin can do multiple functionalities so for example pin number 1 can be used for spi or uart or generating pwm signal or i2c's data line or pc 9 okay so you cannot remember all these pins details so i would recommend you to take a screenshot keep them with you so that whenever it is required you can refer to this pins layout or else you can download the reference manual of this microcontroller board and from there also you can get all the details regarding the pins so what are the different peripherals available with the F forty four six R E microcontroller board. First of all, remember this microcontroller can go up to one hundred eighty megahertz. That means it is supporting one hundred eighty megahertz CPU clock frequency. Then the voltage VDD can range from one point seven to three point 6 volt don't try to exceed these voltages because that may damage the microcontroller board apart from that it supports uart it provides 512 kilobyte of flash memory 128 kilobyte of sram 4 kilobyte of sram for backup it supports or provides 10 general purpose timers 2 advanced controlled timers two basic timers four spi communication ports four i2c communication ports two uart port and of course it support usb otg two can support bus okay can bus and one spdif receiver one hdmi port one quad spi communication port it can support camera interfaces it provides you 50 gpio pins with external interrupt which is a very big number for interrupts it provides 3 12-bit adcs for analog to digital conversion purpose with 16 channels each and two channels of dac which support 12 bit so if you see this microcontroller is packed with so many different peripherals based on which you can develop very complicated projects or you can accomplish very complex programs in a very short time period because the clock is very high speed so this pro microcontroller is almost ideal for medium level projects i have shown you how to install the cube mx and STM32 Cube IDE. Remember, you can work with 
कील और आई ए आर और यू कैन यूज एस टी एम थर्टी टू वर्क बेंच और एटोलिक एनी ऑफ दीज आई डीज विल सपोर्ट द कोर्स दैट वी विल जनरेट इन द कोर्स तो रिमेंबर कील इज नॉट अ फ्री सॉफ्टवेयर इट ऑनली सपोर्ट थर्टी टू किलो बाइट ऑफ फ्री कोड अपलोडिंग सिमिलर आई ए आर ऑल्सो सपोर्ट ओनली थर्टी टू किलो बाइट ऑफ मैक्सिमम कोड बट एस टी एम थर्टी टू सिस्टम वर्क बंच एंड एटोलिक एंड नाउ द न्यूअर वर्जन ऑफ एस टी एम थर्टी टू क्यूब आई डी ई ऑल दीज थ्री सॉफ्टवेयर और आई डी ईज सपोर्ट फुल दैट मीन्स अनलिमिटेड code size so you can extend your code to the maximum limit of the memory available in the microcontroller board so i would recommend to go with stm32 cube ide because it contains the feature of both stm32 cube ide cube mx okay and apart from that it also supports the feature of eclipse which is considered to be one of the most standard ide for microcontroller programming so if you want to go with my recommendation then please download stm32 cube ide because it will have both features of the stm cube mx and the eclipse of course you will require stm link driver that can be downloaded freely from this link or when we will start writing our own projects i will show you how to download this driver and even update this driver for your stm cube ide with this i would like to and this video if you have not subscribed my channel then i would request you to please subscribe my channel if you have any doubts or suggestions then please put your doubts and suggestions in the comment section thank you and have a nice day